It is now my pleasure to introduce our first student speaker, a French concentrator with a certificate in theater hailing from San Diego, California. I give you Becca Forsman. We're here. It's that time of year when, as reliably as the clockwork of Shirley's Satan-powered weather machine, <laughs> it occurs to you that Princeton life is like a redo of the Garden of Eden plus J. Crew loungewear. <laughs> the Eden of Princeton occurs to you at 2 a.m. as you charge pizza to the magical card that gives you unrestricted access to six all-you-can-eat dining halls, ten convertible mansions slash food courts slash nightclubs, and unlimited credit at a castle-sized Quickie Mart featured in the opening montage of the TV series, House. <laughs> the Eden of Princeton occurs to you as you stand in your dorm hallway, dripping and naked in your towel, waiting for the public safety officer, who looks like a nicer version of your grandfather, to unlock your door. The Eden of Princeton occurs to you as you attend a multicultural event with sitar-playing rock stars, moderate pyrotechnics, inexplicable funding from the classics department, <laughs> free t-shirts, and aggressively distributed sacks of kettle, kettle corn the size of hefty toddlers. <laughs> New Jersey is, after all, the garden state. The only thing we're missing here is a cheeky little serpent. But in January of my senior year, as my caller ID flashed, Mom, it also occurred to me that Princeton's version of Eden included the Fitzrandolph Gates. It occurred to me that most of my prelapsarian classmates would be walking out of those gates employed, or a Rhodes Scholar, or designing robots that fight AIDS and hug people. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Beck Beck, it's Mom. How are you? How's the search for next year going? Well, um... I, I, got, I got into the school in, in Paris. Ooh, what's it called? L'Ecole Jacques Lecoq. Le what? Cock. What? Cock, Mom. Cock. <laughs> oh, well, what do they teach? Clowning. <laughs> what? Clowning. I, I'm going to be a clown at the cock school. My application to L'Ecole Jacques Lecoq was inspired by the summer before senior year. Princeton decided that clowning classes were legitimate thesis research, and with an affectionate ruffle of my hair, funded a trip to, Fra to France to, stutter with, to study with theater guru Philippe Gaulier. I just stuttered. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, oh, pa pa. Okay. Um, I don't know what either I or Auntie Princeton was expecting, but the classes were like American Idol. Only all the competitors wore gaucho pants made of bamboo linen, and there was only one judge. Like Simon, only shorter, fatter, and French. With a, te with a teaching method based loosely on Robespierre's reign of terror. Most days, he beat a small drum and made absurd demands, such as, bon, bah, bah, très bien, très bien. And now, you pretend to be a uh, washing machine. Wh what? I, I, you shut up with the talking! You do it! Uh. <laughs> hey, stop, 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 stop! You are a washing machine of merde! <laughs> As Philippe continued with his usual flood of slander, I considered escaping his class via defenestration. Instead, however, a wonderful thing happened. I abandoned all instincts of self-preservation and embraced my failure, unleashing my clown persona, the true me that I had been trying to suppress for years. Within seconds, I looked like a human version of the squirrel from Ice Age as it outruns a collapsing glacier. 
Failure unlocked my potential and forced me to abandon the self I thought I should be and revel in the self I truly was. A cracked out rodent girl, apocalyptically stressed out and possessed by an irrational desire to hoard things. <laughs> Princeton did much the same for all of us. Unlock, <laughs> yes. Unlocking our potential when they mailed that acceptance letter, then forcing us to confront failure as we tried not to look like well-educated pumpkins in our orange and black. Both Princeton and Philippe knew our shortcomings have to be acknowledged because failure reveals us to ourselves. Failure is not about the unsuccessful act. It's about the person you become after doing the worst impression of a washing machine known to man. At class day, we talk a lot about our moments of success, as well we should. It's been a joy to watch our friends pursue their geniuses of choice here and thrive. Concert pianists, walk-on varsity athletes, founders of humanitarian NGOs. We've celebrated our classmates wonderfully, ushering fellow thesis writers through their caffeine-induced hallucinations to the banks of the Woody Woo Fountain, where we have braved the urine-saturated waters alongside them, cheering wildly. But can we talk for a moment about the failures? Wait, I sense the Princeton website designers stamping their little cyberspace boots. Ooh, how are we going to salvage a marketable homepage video from this? <laughs> but, apparently they're German, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, but, let's do it anyway. We have congregated at an exceptionally high-powered institution, and instead of eating each other alive like laser beam-headed mackerel, we have allowed each other to risk, stumble, break, pick ourselves up, and not be perfect. I look out at you, and I see people who were gentle enough to make a place for my failures when I could not. Every one of us has done that for a friend here. You listened to him. You spoke up for her. You got him help you walked her home. This is the place we truly learned and taught each other to fail for real, to help, and to start again. But hold the violins. Let's be real, class of 2010. You thought your education was done? Guess what? We're all going to the graduate school of life next year. Hope you took your GRE and scored high and hardcore, because shock Ah, more pitfalls, and a job market run by dictatorial French midgets is just around the bend. <laughs> but I feel like it's fine. Why? Think about your four years here, the workload and incertitude you overcame, the DMs you carpeed. <laughs> yep. The mental toughness you exercised. We straddled adolescence and adulthood gloriously, and we stand here today as man-children, girl-women, <laughs> capable of both tomfoolery and attempts at world domination with the help of TigerNet alumni services. <laughs> My point? Our failures at Princeton have revealed the absurdity and freakish strength that is special to each one of us. So why should we try to stop failing after we fall from the Garden of Eden tomorrow? Why should we stop taking risks and surprising ourselves in favor of stability, of suitability, of saving face? Let's live tomorrow, next year, the rest of our lives with this in mind. The world is wide and the laughs are ours for the taking. Carpe ridiculum!